Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Hey man, it, it's not a party until you've told a honky tonk crack story. It's Wrestling Mayhem Show 541. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter. That's something you can check out on Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold at the Patreon, patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. This is the show where we talk professional wrestling and with my compatriots. Uh, first of all, uh, he is the only one on the show with a future Endeavor letter from the WWE, but we hope that they hire him back to log all that TNA footage. He's <laughs> mad, Mike. I hope they don't lie me back to log all that TNA footage because I really don't want to see Francine almost get raped again. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Also, that was with, a thing that happened. Also <laughs> with me uh, on the other side of Pittsburgh, he is the Riz. Or whatever Orlando Jordan was doing. You don't want to speak. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that this, whole time. Oh, no. Oh, no. Put the toothpaste away. Uh, also with <laughs> us in studio, back on the show. That's I think right. you, you were on the... Main, you were on this show, right? You, I've been on this show. We have interviewed months, yeah. you, but you have been on this, been show, this show as well. Thrice, I think. No, this show, Pretty really? Sure. Yeah. Is that guest host? That means he's a guest host. Congratulations, you yeah. have graduated. You and Chris LaRusso yes, have become official co-hosts of the show. All right, it's it, not it, together though. I like the three guy. episode do, we, role. We don't, we don't we don't do anything for you or anything like that. No, 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 no. You, it's I mean, it's we'll a title. Like a yeah. No raise in pay. More responsibility. Do you get a theme song? Uh, no, 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 sorry, sorry. I, I think I think we should break tradition. <clears throat> I think we should triple his pay. Triple your pay? Ooh, all right. Ooh, there you, you go. Threat, you were threatening to cut in what? half earlier, so that's what is what is three times zero? Oh no 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 no! He gets uh three times of whatever he got in pizza tonight. Ooh, oh yeah. wow! Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's because yeah. uh, we're that's out of that pizza. Time. There were there was like two slices. Yeah, and okay. I had one. Yep. Yeah. There you go. There you go. So three. Next you get time, three more. Yes. Three slices. I'm there. That's that's it. That's that's the. Um, I hope I spelled your name right since you can't see video. I can't see the thing. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just looking at it thinking. Why are there four? Hey, there four oh, that's axes. Okay. We we have we have a disconnect in the studio because we had to, we had to we had to use a piece of hardware at the looking for group thing. Check that out. The looking for group no mercy tournament. Um, <laughs> I lost my Ooh, mind when right. I lost my mind when the guys both picked Chris Benoit for a match. <laughs> So yeah. check that yeah, out. That was, that was a good pick at the time. I just, and almost like we planned that sort of. Almost like you planned. One was wearing almost. an awkward referee shirt. But anyway, check that out. WrestlingMayhemShow.com and so much uh, more over there, of course. Subscribe to the show. Check us out on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, YouTube, and Facebook for the video versions. And, uh, and, and of course, follow us on Twitter as well. Some great conversations, especially during the wrestling shows. Um, we've been having a lot of fun with those and, and communicating with you guys lately. Also, drop us a line at 412-206-WMS0 or that email address, guys. Good times! Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, check us out on The405Radio.com. We're the thing that's not talking about Donald Trump yet. <laughs> We're the um, weirdest thing on that podcast. I know. That like, show, so. how are, yes, we <laughs> one of these things is not like the other um anyways uh you can also drop us uh, uh share the show leave a comment on itunes however however you can to support the show we appreciate it all but also a big thanks to our patreon supporters Bo Diggity! Woo! Uh, at the one dollar level, our lo- current longest reigning Patreon supporter, as well as our friends, and I can't. You know, usually I let the guest um, um, say these, but there's no screen in front of you it. because I didn't connect it because right. the thing is not here. A big thanks to server not found. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then that thing got plugged in for some many, reason. Many thanks for your support. Uh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Um, also, thanks to the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's Foundation for Podcast Betterment, also at the $1 level. Our friend Ed Burke. We were having a Twitter conversation about how to say his name. It's Ed Bjork. Sorry. Ed Bjork. Okay. Bjork, like Ed Bjork. Singer? Wait, have I been saying that part wrong this entire time? <clears throat> no. It's the other. I, we, we, were, we were talking on, on uh, last week about saying his name right. Mm-hmm. And uh, we meant we just came up with Ed Bjork. Bjork. 
Uh, oh, as well, a there you go. singer. Hey, man, sure. a, a, as a Patreon, he gets to let pro wrestlers, one of which at least has been in Ring of Honor, mispronounce his name. I think that's what, that's one of the benefits you get from giving money <laughs> to the show. We don't give anybody a thesaurus. Uh, anyways, also, Alex Carr is out in California supporting at the $1 level and some guy named Bobby, Bobby Snyder also supporting the show at a dollar. He's from Johnstown. Yeah, I understand he's from Johnstown. Uh, so anyways, uh, uh, thank you so much to those people. And I can say you can give a buck. You cannot patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. You get very, uh, special stories from our guests as of late road stories from our friends, Chris LaRusso and Andrew palace and, uh, find out, um, which wrestlers it's okay to take crack fun from and which ones it's not okay to take from. There are caveats. There are caveats to it. Remember the answer may surprise the you. Answer <laughs> may surprise you. Yeah, let's get no, yeah, let's get that way on it. <laughs> so let's talk. I was say no, let's talk pro wrestling. Of course, I think the biggest news. You know what? I, okay, I'm not going to say which is the biggest news, but the most mainstream <clears throat> news lately is the return of Bill Goldberg. The re- the <laughs> pending return of Gil- Gilbert Gilbert Gil- too. Gilbert. Gilbert. I'd rather see James Ellsworth. <laughs> we talked. We got started getting into this a little bit less than James Ellsworth. Yes, um, he's getting a title match next week. Sorg, wait, that's wait. the biggest news. Is that? Is that? Do they announce that's that on a real Smack? thing? That's a thing. Oh, that's so great. That's, oh. thing. that's so All great. Right. Um. Anyways, two hands in a dream. Two hands in a dream, man. <laughs> well, the other guy <laughs> with two hands, hands, two hands in a dream, was Bill Goldberg. All those many years ago, and a small, a small, large NFL lineman became or whatever the hell he was Dude, uh, became yeah. a star mm-hmm. what? Oh, he was a defensive was line. he defense yeah. defense lineman yeah. i was of right yeah. sorg of course look at that guy that's what i get for watching the bill goldberg uh monday night wars episode <laughs> in my sleep i pick up on details like that uh so of course wwe promoting the hell out of bill goldberg returning by showing the monday night war episode where they tell, tell everybody that he can't wrestle <laughs> yeah that would be amazing no, that, that is well, amazing. Did. That yeah, is what they they're did. doing. It was on today when I flipped <laughs> on the channel. It's what they advertise at the end of Raw as yep. coming on next at the WWE That's Network. Right. I'm oh. like, wait a minute. I'm getting mixed signals here. <laughs> I'm just saying. Anybody? Anybody else on that? Uh, I didn't what, watch other it, than that, and the other thing I, I was agreed. talking with, um, who was I talking with today about this? Actually, our, our good friend, Sean Graham, our, our Ring, of, Ring of Honor friend, uh, but as in, <clears> he goes to Ring of Honor shows with me. Um, I was having lunch with him today, and we were talking wrestling. And he and and uh, uh, I think it's interesting because they did a little bit of a flashback to that WrestleMania 20 match that Mike was in attendance for, of course, in Madison Square Garden, <laughs> where everybody match. booed them, where everybody booed them out of the building. I love that match. For you love that match. I absolutely Fucking love that match. Reason. Hey, wait, 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 yeah. wait, 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 wait. Bert, why do you love that match? Because it was such a spectacle. Okay. It was just one of those moments you have to. It just that's one of those moments you have to, in the words of Jericho, drink it in, man, because that was that was <laughs> such a like like you get chills when they did the uh, na na hey hey goodbye chant. That was the first time they ever did that in, in, during a match. Really? Like during a match? The, the crowd they... doing that during a match it, it, that I can recall. And like when they did that, I'm like, wow, this is like next level kind of stuff. Yeah. Because it was just such a spectacle. Was that that was like three or four minutes? I mean. The match itself it was, was six. It, it, yeah, it was like it was six minutes of that, and then the so, actual match, because that was a. Uh, I mean, that was something that watching that you couldn't. I, the last time I felt that way before that was Hogan Rock at WrestleMania. So wait, your favorite part of that match was essentially me. Yeah, pretty much because okay, I accept. I accept your right answer. because I mean the match itself. <laughs> the match itself was was what it was, and it wasn't you know very good because they. I mean they mailed it in. Once they realized that nothing was happening, they're both leaving. There's no reason for them to put any effort into it, and, and but the crowd made that one of the most memorable matches that mm-hmm. I've ever seen. And I always, I always look at it. I, I always look at it on a sour note <clears> because, <throat> yeah, it's memorable, but not for the right reasons. Of course not. Right? Of course I not. Mean, but but I guess you. you but circumstantially, you're... I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, yeah, two yeah. guys about to leave the company, and everybody knows it. The it, internet it, it, is a thing now. In the city where so, everybody's going to tell you about it. It's, yeah. it's not like they did it in Des Moines, where you know, word gets out to them two weeks later. Oh, they're about it to leave? It could have been worse. It could have been Chicago. Right. Or, or or Hartford or something, the one they had at the mall in Hartford. Or the version of Pittsburgh that had the Royal Rumble. Right, right. Yeah, that one. You're right. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. We would, we'll, yeah, no. Right. We were not nice people that night. <laughs> so I hated the crowd that night. I absolutely despised the crowd that night. It was... Um, 
okay, side note, since we're getting into that a little bit, uh, sitting there, like, I can't remember mm-hmm. participating in it. Right. I just remember looking around and being in the middle of it. Like, like I've had a couple moments in my life. I'm like, oh, crap, I might be in the middle of a riot. Right. Uh, and that was one of those times. Right. <laughs> I, the, other, the other time was the 2001 gathering of the Juggalos. The other oh, time was boy. when Paul Orndorff was rallying everybody against Obama in Franklin at Night of Legends. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> wow. Oh, people, I mean, that, would... that was like, oh, I am at the wrong rally. Uh, crowds, crowds can make or break a match. And, and, and in that case, they elevated that, in my, in my mind, to a memorable level. Mm-hmm. Because it was just the two of them, the normal crowd, moderate heat when it's supposed to be there. I wouldn't have thought anything of it. I would have thought, okay, that was a match. Let's move on to the next thing, whatever. But the crowd made that moment. There were matches where the crowd could absolutely kill a, kill a match for the wrong reasons. Orton Cena at that Rumble, the exact same thing. I mean, that was a decent match independent of the crowd. And, right. and, and that crowd killed that match. Because I, I think the fact that they hyped it as a regular match didn't help either. That's one of the few matches I've ever seen that was actually hyped as a regular match. Yeah, after they had so many in a ladder match, and, yeah, and they're like, seen, "We're going to have another match." You've seen everything in that in that same venue. They had an Iron Man match. That was I remember. That and, was, and now you're hyping it as a regular match. That was that was the well, that was the worst one because <clears throat> going into it, like I think Stephanie announced it and right. was like, "We're going to do something like really important here. You're yeah. going to have." A one-on-one standard match. I'm like, right, yeah, but yeah. she's saying it. But she was saying it like she was announcing Hell in a Cell right, on yeah. fire. <laughs> you know, okay, like ten Hells in the Cell. Yeah, right. yeah. And it's it's like you're gonna have a normal match opening right. Royal Rumble. You're selling it as that. Yeah, and then of course the the Daniel Bryan effect. Open Royal Rumble, by the way. I mean, it was still. Yeah. I mean, it was in the opening. Opened. Like I see that opening matches before the Royal Rumble are the least consequential matches you can possibly have. Of course, of right? Course. Yeah. So, uh, not necessarily. Well, I, mean, I, I mean, some like now, I, I, nowadays, yes. I mean, it, had, it's a generalization. Yeah, but at okay. the time, but you, yeah, I mean, you've like had, you've had like Benoit, Jericho doing the, right. at the Rumble, but I mean, I mean, that's where you stick like Brock Lesnar, Hardcore Holly. Yeah, right for the championship for some reason. Yeah, like that kind. That's of where thing. you stick workers. I've never like that. That years later, you're surprised never appeared in a Royal Rumble, like Razor Ramon slash Scott Hall. Was never, wow. was, never in the actual, was never in the actual Rumble. Never itself. realized. No, Cause, cause because what? he always did a 15, 20 minute Intercontinental title match or whatever before the show. Okay. Yeah, that was back in the day where, at, where they actually had such a flushed out roster oh, that right, people right. didn't do double yeah. duty. And, bef- and before his return, what was it, last year or two years ago, D- the Dudleys. Dudleys were never in the Rumble before mm-hmm. Bubba Ray's spot last year. Mm-hmm. Exact same thing. JBL. It was back to Goldberg, right? Well, no, JBL was in the Rumble. He was in the Rumble as, as they, like, um, for like Bradshaw two... from the APA. Yeah, and, so. and I think when they when they, but they made that the, when Michael Cole like he did that little spot a few years ago. Michael Cole made the point. Oh, it's the first time the JBL character was never in the Royal Rumble. But yeah, but uh, yeah, back to Goldberg. That's where, that's where when they say character on commentary, <laughs> right? But so so we have Goldberg announced announced that he was thinking about coming back. Paul Heyman doing his thing. Uh, Goldberg's going to show up on Raw. Uh, this is this is one of those things where yeah no I'm not looking forward to the match at all but this is going to be a mainstream spectacle oh yeah, it, it, absolutely and I think I in- and and Mike too we were talking about would they really do this at Survivor Series um, I think so because it's the 30th Sur- Sur- Survivor Series 30th Survivor Series and they're doing the and they're, it's a really close tie into the video game too which is why <laughs> which, which is why, which is why they're which we've is why been they're building we've it. actually been hyping this match yeah. since the first. It was. Re- it, you guys watched uh, what was it? Rocky Balboa, right? Yeah, right. This is the same exact storyline. Oh, wow. Absolutely. Wow. Is. Um, this is maybe, maybe the best thing to come out of the video game uh, uh, since Suicide. Highly disagree. <laughs> suicide. Yeah. Highly disagree. That's right, because actually the Suicide became uh, T.J. Perkins. So right, right. In the in the end. First, he uh, became Manix. Manix, or, yeah, right. But let's yeah. let's not forget Manic. I'm skipping a lot of the middle part because I don't have time for that. Uh, you <laughs> know what I don't have time for, Sorg? <laughs> WWE that? sanctioned part. Goldberg. Goldberg. I don't. Uh, Goldberg. Because all right, all right. Um, <clears throat> I've made no secret that this that this match is the worst piece of shit I've ever seen live. <laughs> um, and now unbelievably 
both Goldberg and Brock Lesnar are in places in their career where they can do less with each other. Right. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Like Brock Lesnar is the unstoppable juggernaut who couldn't even have a match, a proper match with Randy Orton. Right. So he decided to just beat him bloody. (laughs) He beat the undertaker at WrestleMania. The only way you're allowed to even get a win over Brock Lesnar is if it's a triple threat match and he's not involved in the decision. Right. And Goldberg is fucking old. Yeah. And will not want to do anything. <laughs> like, picture Dean Ambrose in 20 years. That's what this match is going to be. It's going to be like, and I said this last night on the wrap up, I would rather see. Goldberg and Brock Lesnar playing as themselves Mm -hmm. in the video game on Up, Up, Down, Down, streamed live on that pay-per-view. I would rather see that. Because this is just going... It's not even going to be a spectacle. Right. Unless Goldberg legitimately just busts him open and beat the shit out of him, which is not going to happen. Nope. Unless that happens... I don't see the point of this. It's not like Bill Goldberg is the rock. If this was the rock, totally different story. The rock actually matters in 2016. You know who doesn't Goldberg. Right. 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 And, and again, yeah. this isn't for the matches for the spectacle it's for the press is for ESPN talking about it. And correct me if I'm wrong. Bill Goldberg's last match was against Brock Lesnar. Right. That would no, that was the last match for both of them. That's why they did that. Right. But right. it's like, it was, that was his last match anywhere against anybody. That's true. Period. That's true. He went and did uh, car shows. 13 years or So he's years rested. Ago. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, you know who he could show up and do a warm up, warm up match with. And maybe they could do it at Hell in Cell. James Ellsworth. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you're on my. You're on I mean, my. A, a match versus James Ellsworth is exactly like training for a match with Brock Lesnar. Right. I think it's perfect exactly. in the s- same segment. While we're talking about uh, uh, the phenomenon that is Bill Goldberg, uh, we should talk about the phenomenon that is James El- Ellsworth, who apparently does he run a promotion? I believe. Yeah. Maryland. Mm-hmm. In Maryland. Yeah. Right. And like, who is he? Who does he have the in with? At this point, I don't know. Yeah. Like, I mean, you gotta like WWE definitely in in the okay. All right, recent, all right. You know whoa, 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 whoa. WWE definitely in recent time has listened to the audience and social media and the buzz on that, and has responded to that. And I think this is this definitely is one of those point. cases. Oh, of course. Um, and and that was by the way, that was great. That was great. Just Dean mm-hmm. Dean Ambrose was fantastic tonight with that stuff. This is this yeah. this is I'll the have, Dean. I, I'm I can't okay. wait to watch that. I'm down with that. Uh, when he when he when he gets called, they they take the the age. I forget his name. Asian ref. Um, okay. uh, right. gives him his shirt, <laughs> and then they point out that the Asian the Asian ref is is bigger than James Ellsworth, and <laughs> and and uh, uh, Dean takes his time, undoes his belt so he can properly tuck in his referee's shirt. And then empties his pockets and makes AJ Styles hold the stuff in his pockets, which included um, like a, 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 a pocket watch and 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 a flask and some other stuff. It, it was it was pretty fantastic. And again, they went to commercial as and they're doing the split screen thing now. Really? Okay. So so I don't know if they're going to do that on Hulu cuts. Yeah, right. But so I hope you DVR'd it. Um, uh, no. <laughs> but like that bit. Like checking the guys and everything was still great sight gag material. Mm-hmm. So fantastic, so, Riz. You so have a point. I did, and then this was for your how did if James El- Ellsworth has an in. Uh, honestly, when he showed up on Raw the first time, he was the original Ken Bone. Yeah, he was the original. He, like right. everybody fell in love with James Ellsworth. El- yeah. El- Ellsworth. And he didn't have a porn because... name. What? And he didn't have a porn name. Like Mr. Bone. Like Mr. Bone. Mr. Bone. Ken Bone in the Bone Zone. Uh, but honestly, like, I, it's just a phenomenon that people just grabbed on to 
a weird looking guy who you know doesn't have a shot just because he looks different and looks, looks weird and looks, looks funny. Everything and opposite it, of WWE wrestlers in a world where yes. Kevin where Kevin Owens is the champ. And and now we live in that world where we just said he's getting a title shot next week, Sorg. Mm-hmm. A title shot against AJ Styles. This would be like Ken Bone entering the next debate. Yes. <laughs> is what it would be. And it's and I, and when I watched that, when I saw that, I I actually had a conflict. I couldn't go to the actual show. But when I watched on TV, I worked with Ellsworth before in Maryland uh, for, for actually when, when they come up here for another promotion. And as when he was when his main character, uh, Pretty Jimmy Dream, which is what it was before he changed everything to James Ellsworth in the name of branding. And uh, entertaining guy. I didn't think, I mean, didn't think much of him beyond mm-hmm. entertaining indie worker that, you know, does his shtick and moves on. But when I saw that, I had to do like a, quadruple take when i saw that on on uh on the show and he did the, the promo with the man with two hands and and uh just you know it's it's right place right time right guy who have yes. to blow up even beyond that just mm-hmm. based on the internet the interwebs and it's you know good for him i mean i i you know like the guy working with him but uh you know good for him and, and enjoy your 15 minutes and it seems like they're making <laughs> the most of it right hey, anyway the big thing for him is what can he do to make most of it here and with his own promotion and everything it's got to be hot for him in his area oh, of course of course it's got to be like the hometown hero or something right so awesome <laughs> well guys uh we'll be talking about some more wrestling and uh including a hot hot hell in the cell match so much hells in the cells uh including a really interesting first time hell in a cell but in the meantime i want to give a shout out to indie wrestling.us uh, of course, Renegade Wrestling Alliance. You can see Burt Legrand in the ring this Saturday behind a microphone. Sometimes on commentary. Yes, for wherever, RWA, they, wherever they put me. RWAlive.com. and uh, you can check out everything at IndieWrestling.us, uh, where the Renegade Wrestling Alliance lives online. As far as uh, getting DVDs, digital downloads, great shows like RWA Aggression, um, and hopefully sometime this week we'll be releasing RWA Fall Free for All. That was completely getting out there, I swear. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> editing time is hard these days, guys. Uh, but no, go check it out. Some great stuff, great action by these guys. Uh, keep an eye. Here, here's a little uh, tip. Keep an eye on the RWA YouTube channel. Um, we are going to be working on something special for that coming up soon. Uh, more content, more uh, past matches going to be popping up there. Uh, so uh, if you want to get your wrestling fixes, it's, it's going to be a good place for you guys to go and check out a lot that's going on. Um, and and this is a this is a place where guys like Corey Graves came up yep. uh, as part of their career. Guy, you know, guys like Sanjay Dutt are, are a fixture in there right now. Matt Hardy was there. Uh, was it Pre, two years ago? Pre crisis, yeah. Pre crisis, Matt before Hardy he broke. Apparently, RWA is. <laughs> I'm co- I'm I'm going to refer to him as post crisis Matt Hardy now. That's amazing. Pretty much. Pretty <laughs> much. <laughs> Um, so go check it out, IndieWrestling.us. Sign up for the newsletter to get uh, updates on specials, new releases, and, of course, everything going on with the Wrestling Mayhem show and get a free digital download of an IWC show featuring, above, uh, among all else, uh, Mr. AJ Styles. So over there, IndieWrestling.us. Okay, guys, let's... Um, We had a pretty good announcement. I know we've been talking, uh, you know, extensively over over the last who knows how long about women's the state of women's wrestling and of course you know nxt we had the the women's main event uh iron woman match we had a main event on raw the the first time in like 10 years that we've had that uh with with sasha and charlotte and now we're going to have the first women's hell in a cell let that sink in let that sink in (laughs) hell in the cell with Charlotte and Sasha Banks. Like, and we always like, man, it'd be is great it, if we had a women's hell in the cell. And now we have it. What are we going wrong, to do with it? Is it wrong that I'm more excited about this than Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar? It's not uh, wrong. No, not at all. It's not wrong, but again, it's different audiences. It's more yeah. appreciative. Yeah. It's more more of the ability to be appreciated, right? Yeah, it's also right? gonna be I a good it, match. It, 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 mm-hmm. At this point, what does hell in the cell mean? It, it's it's like a regular match that we can't see as well. 
<laughs> because it's what it's it is. True. Because there's every, no every view is obstructed. Right. You're, you're, if it, live live crowds view is obstructed with the cell, and, and that's I mean that's the real thing. Since they changed it, hard cam is right. right in the middle of that bar. Right. Right. And, but we and, got the float cam now, so maybe that's not a big deal. Exactly. Exactly. But I mean, in terms of, I mean, you wouldn't you you don't watch a woman's match for blood or anything like that. But I mean, there's no the the use of the actual cell is just. It's I don't it's, know. It's, it's mitigated so much in the past few years. That Charlotte and Sasha has have become bloody affairs like by accident oh, just from well, them yeah, going right, at it. Right. What are they going to do by accident in a cage? Right. 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 And it's it, I'm so nervous for them. <laughs> I'm so nervous for Sasha. So yeah, right. I I feel like I feel like one of them's going off the cage. Yep. Or they, not not off the top. Off no, the no. side. Like, like they are. Yeah. I yeah. feel yeah. like those two girls are at least climbing the cage. I can see that. I mean, oh, yeah. they put themselves through physical. I mean, I I appreciate the feud. I'm not big. I'm not as big on Sasha as pretty much everybody else, but I can appreciate Charlotte's athleticism and I can appreciate the story that goes on between them. And I think they've definitely earned that place. If you're gonna put two women in hell of a cell anytime soon, it would be them. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just you know the expectations I have, and yeah, maybe they use the cell in that. In that regard, to be used as a, as a prop for them to do right. the athletic things that only those two can really do, and do believably. I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure there are other athletes, of course, in the female division, but those two probably do the best that the, the, of the two that they can. I think certainly, certainly. I'm looking forward to it. I'm definitely looking forward to it. And yeah, and, and we talked about this a little bit on the wrap up as well. It, it's a little bit of any of these should be feud enders because it's in hell in a cell, right? But of course, because there's three of them. You know, at least one of them is not going to hold up as a even decent Hell in a Cell match. There'll be something fishy. Roman in there. And Rusev, We're probably Excuse Roman and Rusev, maybe. But, uh, <laughs> the one, the one I can, the one that from last night, and I, and you know, not again, just just in the wrap up. The one that I can't get over in terms of why did you take the more interesting option off the table is Rollins and and uh, and Owens. You had a triple threat right there. That would have been so much more interesting. Right. With the Jericho aspect of it. Right. And they keep teasing that. They really keep teasing yeah. that. I'm curious to see where it would have gone. But to have the a, a, a triple threat match, when when you are in the kayfabe uh, race against SmackDown, who just had their great triple threat match two nights right. ago. Right. And it's this, it's this arm race between the McMahons. Has... And you have that on the table to have not only a great triple threat match, but a great triple threat match inside Hell in a Cell. Have we had a triple threat Hell in a Cell? We've had a yeah. six pack. Yeah. Who was it? Yeah, we have. Who who, who was it? Um, I want to say, oh, Rock Triple H and Angle, maybe. I, well, actually, I, no, it was probably um, no, it was probably it was. like Triple H Cena or something I, like that. I'll, I know there's I'll been a triple look threat that up. Hell in I mean, the they, Cell. They had. DX and the McMahons in Hell in a Cell, right? With DX, DX McMahon's big show was Hell in a yeah, Cell. Yeah, it was a handicap. Yeah. Right, that was a handicap that was match. A, but, that was a three on two handicap. But a triple match. threat, though, that's. I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm, we've had. It seems like they would have had one. We've had a five man Hell in a Cell for the WWE we've had six Championship. Man. Right. Six man, of course, two on one handicap. Oh, uh, um, what? Oh, Del Rio, Cena, oh, yeah. and CM Punk. Yeah, that's why I just oh, oh yeah. yep, just found Although it. Although that one, that one kind of was a triple threat, but then I believe Cena got locked out of the match, mm-hmm. and that's how uh, CM Punk won, or Del Rio won. Del Rio won that one. Yeah, Del Rio won that one. But it looks like that's the only triple threat we've had. So I could I easily mean, see, I remember I, that one. I could easily see two reasons for them to re to revisit history on that one. <laughs> For them to say, <laughs> oh, for the first time ever, <laughs> I do. Take I do race. appreciate on, on that level for in terms of revisiting history. The very first time the commercial was downtown for w, for two K seventeen aired, they had Del Rio, and then they wiped it ever since. He's he's no, still, he's still on the one. He's, he's still, still on the ones that the don't face air one, on Raw. The, the, because they don't the, air like as part of Raw's. Well, because when I saw when I saw it live last week was the first time they had it, and the very first time they showed a close up of his face. Mm-hmm. And, and every subsequent one, they just showed that he was at the bar. They didn't show the close yeah. his face because huh. they, they literally switched that in between in, during the commercial. The first time they aired it last week, you saw a close of his face. The second time, you didn't. Well, I think I, I think also depending on how things are, 
sometimes it airs as like you know WWE has kind of their own commercial time right right and then there's like the bot time right i think you have thq buying time on top of them running Maybe. it in the show but so i think there might be a distinction there I as thought well that, i thought that very odd though and i feel like i feel like, like that this, one the one that thq is sending out they don't give a have... crap oh no they don't they, no. they absolutely don't they they're like this is our license Right. And this is what we're doing over here. Right. That's why. Well, yeah. Company. That's also There's... that's also the uh, the one that goes out to every channel. Right. So they, right. They're not right. going to change it just because. Exactly. Right. It's in the you, can. You know what you can? What I, what I did? I I imagined that the person that Dean Ambrose is throwing into the dumpster <laughs> is Del Rio. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I always thought it was Seth Rollins. Whoever it was was dead. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean it's, it's pretty, it's pretty obvious Cody. he's throwing a dead body away. <laughs> could be Ryback. Ooh, could yeah, be right. Cody. Right. Could right. be Cody. Cody. Did you Rose. see his periscope today? Ryback. That was creepy. What did he do? Yeah, he was. He. There was no background. It looks like he was in a car. And the only light was his phone, and he was just there, <laughs> talking. Like, was he doing anything? Uh, he was reciting the secret. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't. I'm trying to find because I was watching it while we were getting, uh, while we were setting up, and uh, I uh, retweeted it from the Mayhem Show account, so okay. I'll it should be on there. I don't know. I'm pulling up his thing. I don't know. I'm, I just see a bunch of stuff about the Big Guy podcast. Riveting stuff here. Oh no! Oh, he's teaming up with the. Oh, he's at a show with the Boogie Man. That's good to see. Wow. At Autumn, Autumn Ride Again. Boogie. There you go. More people should book the Boogie Man. Boogie <laughs> back. Oh, uh, just so you know, of course. Oh no. Well, all right. I, I have a question about um, back bringing it back to women's wrestling. Yep. They're they're very clearly like pushing. They're they're in a they're in a spot where they're actually making women's wrestling more important. I don't think it's at this point. And if when do you guys think a women's match is going to main event pay per view? I depend depending on how it configures, it could be Hell in a Cell. Mm. I think I think I think this interesting. Normally, I would say no. Normally I would say no, but this thing where we put the main event and reconfigured well, this, No Mercy, make well, like, I, think that, I don't, th- I think, I don't think anything's off the table. That's the only time I could possibly see that happening. And, and the only, I mean, of course, the only reason they did it for No Mercy is because of the debate. But that's the only possible circumstance I could see that happening, where you had such a weird uh, configuration of events and inside forces and outside forces that you have to put the main event, or they're doing weird stop gappy like you know, shenanigan things with the yeah. other two matches. Therefore, this is going to be the pure wrestling match that's going to steal a show. Let's put it on main event. Like, right. I loved, I loved, like, speaking of, No Mercy, they had Talking Smack after it. Mm-hmm. And and the best part of that was when Dolph Ziggler called them out for him, his match not being the main event. And I fully agree, because I think it would have been a better one. Oh, absolutely. Yep, he's definitely right. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, they definitely, for sure, and the, the triple threat main, main event, yeah. Yeah, quote, quote, it was a very good match. Right. Very good match. But that Dolphin Miz one, wow. But you also want to get the most eyeballs on it. And, and WWE is not, they're not stupid in that regard. I mean, they knew, right. they knew, I mean, that people like me, you know, real talk is what I did. I switched right to the debate after the, I kept, <laughs> maybe, I kept maybe half an eye on it because, you know, the debate does have a WWE Hall of Famer in it. So, you know, I'm trying to keep loyal. That's true. But, you know, the, um, but uh, yeah, I was just I, I I kept half an eye on it on my laptop on the stream. But for the most part, I focused on the debate because it's also I was also at work too. My work involved making sure the debate was running okay on our radio station. But um, so that you know, I, I try to keep an eyeball on, on No Mercy, and I still need to watch most of it. You know, the, especially the uh, Dolph Miz match, but because I I like I generally like the story they were telling. And I think sometimes that matters. You know, Ms. Dolph for the fiftieth time that I've seen it is nice, but if you put a good story behind it, then you know it matters. And I think I really did with this with this. Go and and I, I liked there was one part where I think it was the triple threat match, the one that started started night. Uh, it ended on Sunday Night Football. Oh, it did. It ended at the exact time Monday Night Football or Sunday Night Football started. Wow. 
I didn't know. So, so. <laughs> wow. that was a little weird. Aspect that's, a spe- that's a specific time frame. Yeah, like it, like once I heard like I looked on Twitter and they just said it's eight thirty six <laughs> or eight thirty five, right. and the main event's over, and now Sunday night football is starting. It's funny how tu- it was it's funny how hyper attuned they are to that sort of thing. Remember that was it the uh, NBA Finals or the halftime of the NBA Finals mm-hmm. on a Monday, like during halftime is when they did the AJ turn on Cena. Yep, like that yep. exact moment. Like yeah, they just, they do plan for stuff like that. It, like 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 to the minute where there was like it, an incredible exercise in water treading from like eight eight o'clock to eight forty five, and then for like. Five minutes, they have your attention where they do something amazing, like have a Cena turn or have AJ turn on Cena, and they go back to more water treading. It's like a little bit of the timing for when they did the uh, halftime heat for the Super Bowl, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then a little bit of well, their early practice was competing with WCW. Right, right, exactly. Right? Like where they were, they were like from minute to minute, practically trying to one up each other. I mean, that I really wish we could bring back halftime heat. Yeah, seriously, seriously, put it somewhere. I would love that. Can we just do it on WWE Network? So like in the long run, I mean, yeah, I, I, I know it doesn't serve the purpose as you're flipping through the channels on the halftime and therefore you find this. Right. But still, they can do that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, and, and the match was pre recorded. It's not oh, like absolutely. it was live. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Right. Exactly. I, and it's back when that was OK. Right. So I, I don't know. It's some interesting thoughts there. Do people even, do other stations even run counter to the halftime show anymore? Like I know this yeah, puppy bowl. Uh, the puppy bowl. I was excited. I was about to say the puppy bowl. I know that, but I, I can't think of any other. That's, that's that about it. Yeah, right. That's about it. It's the puppy bowl. With, everybody used to do that with like, the with the kitty halftime show. Right. Everybody used to do the the, the halftime <laughs> show. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, didn't Fox? I mean, Celebrity Deathmatch did one year. Oh, Fox Celebrity yeah. Deathmatch. Celebrity did Deathmatch did a couple of years. Beavis and yeah. Butthead did for, for a couple of years. Yeah. Uh, like in Living Color, way back in the day, did like a halftime stuff live. Mm-hmm. Really? I, yeah. I don't even remember that. Yeah. Yeah. They did a couple like specific ones. Nice. Well, we'll get back into. I, I think no, go we're ahead. gonna get women may eventing the pay per view before WrestleMania. I mean, with Mick Foley running the show and his love of the divas that he bought that he has now at his disposable disposal, I see it happening. I, I don't want to say it's at Hell in a Cell, but I see it happening at Hell in a Cell. It's, it's I. Sorry. I, I think if it was going to be a Hell in the Cell, they'd announce it and make a big deal of it like they yeah. did for uh, the but takeover. But we have – But get ready for this. We actually have three weeks until Hell in the Cell. Well, it's, <sighs> it's cheating, but I could see an angle maybe sometime next year with the proliferation of pay-per-views where they do an all-woman one with both brands. Maybe. Uh, I mean, maybe. Like it's already it's, a tournament it's, in place. It's cheating. To, it's oh, that's cheating right. They're supposed to be doing a tournament, like a CWC-style yeah, right, right, one. For women, right. Yeah. So – I think that's where that happens. Yeah. Not not a pay per view, but like they're gonna have a live special or, or a special event or something. No, they'll have Maybe. a live special at the end of that, like they did for right. CWC. Um, yep. All right, guys. Yeah, but I, I mean that. I mean that's great. I think we need them to be a main event on pay per view, though. Yeah, certainly. Mm-hmm. Well, guys, uh, I w- we'll get back with the big question. I want to talk to Mad Mike. Uh, he had uh, experience <clears throat> with our Lucha Underground friends at the New York, New York Comic Con, so I want to touch base on that. In the meantime, I want to give a shout out to our good friends, Slice on Broadway. Bird had a little bit here. Amen. Mr. Bert Legrand. And of course, uh, uh, check them out if you're in the Pittsburgh area. I know not everybody's in here, but if you have to be stopped through town, uh, right here in Beachview on Broadway Avenue, Carnegie, PA, or at PNC Park, the home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. A lot of people come in, check out the Pirates game. It's a great stadium, no matter how we're playing. Uh, so it's always a good time there. Check them out. They've been supporting the show. Perfect podcast. Perfect. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. For a good while now, PJ's underscore Slice on the Twitter and Slice on Broadway on the Facebook and the Instagram. If you happen to go down there, make sure to give him a high five and say it's from the Wrestling Mayhem show. We'll be right back with the big question. Let's talk tech. Tech news discussions from the people in the industry right here in Pittsburgh. Online, gadgets, startups, and more. Check it out at awesomecast.net. Wrestling Mayhem Show, rocking it here. Of course, uh, lining up for the big question here with the Riz, Mad Mike up in Poughkeepsie, New York, and Bert Legrand, announcer extraordinaire for the Renegade Wrestling Alliance 15-year 
a, a veteran, veteran of we'll veteran. I don't know. I, I didn't know if we we're, we're, we're growing at that. I sprained a foot once. I'm sprained good. a foot once. I, that's right. I, I You've had some sprayed. interactions yeah. over the years. I scar, I scar you know, sprayed. you know which drugs are the right currency from certain and to buy from who guys that you can learn about on the uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold, of course. Uh, but it is now for time for the big question, and Riz has one for yes. us this week because. Actually, this has been on my mind for a week or so. I don't know why, but it, it just popped into my head that uh, Sorg and I, we both went to Shikara this year. Sorg, this, that, was, that wasn't your first time going to uh, King of Trios. You nope. were obviously was somebody else and didn't take me the first time. Uh, but this was the first time I did, and I and I crossed it off my bucket list. Uh, both... I believe both Sorg and Mad Mike have both uh, went, to, went gone to WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bert, I'm not sure. What, I went to 23 what, in Detroit. Yes. So I'm the only one here who hasn't been to WrestleMania. Mm. So that's still on mine. But I want to know your guys' what is still on your wrestling bucket list? Holy crap. Mm. Holy crap. What is left? Ooh. What is left? Wow. So hmm. who, does anybody have one? Well, um, I've t- had Vampiro tell me eat a bag of dicks. Didn't even Ooh. know that was on your bucket list. <laughs> a whole bag? I didn't even know yes, a whole did. bag. Yes, I mean, did. we can we can ship some to you. That's what happens it's, when you try to close the I interview. I mean, I can, I can find my When Vampiro is not ready for you to stop <laughs> asking him questions. <laughs> I really wish I was online for that one. Wow. Like, I didn't even know that was going down. It was it was uh, tremendous. Um, let's see. Uh, I I have a future endeavor letter. That's you do. true. You do. Uh, <laughs> oh, from- um, actually, um, I think the the thing that comes prevalent to my mind is to attend a Lucha Underground taping. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. that's big mm-hmm. on my list. Like that. I, I'm going to try to make that happen. That's that's next on my list. Um, Because I've actually gotten a lot of of stuff crossed off my list. Like, I've been to an ECW pay-per-view, a TNA pay-per-view, and a WWE pay-per-view. That was up there. I'd love to see a New Japan show, too. Mm -hmm. That is less likely. Damn it. You took mine that I just created. (laughs) (laughs) Out of whole cloth. It uh, wouldn't be the big question if someone didn't steal someone else's answer. This is true. And that's what I was trying to uh, take away, like get yeah. away from that area. But, uh, like, but yeah, Lucha and New Japan. Those, those are my uh, my biggies, I think. Yeah, it would say New Japan just kind of got tacked on for me. Um, again, done WrestleMania, seen shows at ECW Arena, hell been backstage at ECW Arena for shows. Uh, so that was good. Um, uh, Royal Rumble, of course, here in mm-hmm. town. Uh, uh, I want to see a SummerSlam. The SummerSlam has to be on the list. Yeah. And I want to do, because this is going to be a quasi-bucket list part, because I've been to a WrestleMania, but I wasn't able to do the WrestleMania the, experience. Because right. we were at mm-hmm. WrestleCon, and and so we had to do that, so we really couldn't do, and we just barely even got a ticket for WrestleMania to go. Sure. And I'm like, dude, we're here. We came out here. I'm freaking going to WrestleMania, and you're coming with me. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> to the guy that was with me. And, uh, you know, for what it was. But, uh, no, like, yeah, go do... So, like, the Hall of Fame do and a summer sl- and Do like a that. SummerSlam where you do the NXT and the SummerSlam. Do a WrestleMania where you do the, now, NXT, maybe Hall Fan Fest or other indies in the Hall of Fame and WrestleMania. In the Raw afterwards, perhaps. Uh, like I want to do the full package, uh, the 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 New Japan thing. Um, considering that travel wise now, uh, after after in a couple months, um, that side of the world is not going to be a stranger to me. I'd love to go to Japan in general. I, I just kind of always wanted to. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of where I, a, a, a kind of more um, not as grand. I'd like to go to Bola. I like to go to a PWG show and, and see what that sure. is. Yeah. I I know I, how impossible story, that is, well, which so much. which is pretty much all of us, right? So yeah, uh, yeah. but you know, other than that, you know, that's uh, um um I have a small goal with all these trips coming up next year. These these five in a row trips going coming on, uh, probably the second quarter of next year. 
Um, I want to try to find an indie show on every trip I go on. I have nice. no idea if it's possible. Is there indie wrestling in Nebraska? We'll find out. Um, but uh, not even internet in Nebraska. I know, right? <laughs> and it's the reason I'm not. And it's the reason I'm not making Kaiju Big Battle. And then uh, PR is the reason I'm not making Super Indie. I mean, geez. Um, but uh, anyways, no, no, no. But yeah, seriously, like, like, like stuff around that. Um, I got one out of three last year. So I'm <laughs> not doing good with it so far. Uh, but yeah, no, that's my general stuff. So, what about you, Bert? Um, let's see. As a fan, I did the Mania thing, of course. And I actually missed out on the Hall of Fame that year, even though I wanted to go. But I didn't get the two. Uh, didn't drive up to Detroit until just beforehand and the person that actually met up there didn't want to go uh, he, he wanted uh, to, he wanted to watch the final four so we did that at a hooters what real sports we did that at a hooters 10 miles away from detroit uh, with a uh noted wwe hall of famer who was passed out at the bar <laughs> who i mentioned who i mentioned earlier tonight in the uh patrol <laughs> section of it so i'll let, I'll let the patrol members figure that out but um that person was passed out the bar and they had to kick him out but um, so as a, as a as a fan, I still want to go see the Hall of Fame uh, somewhere, which would be part and parcel of the whole WrestleMania experience. SummerSlam is not really as high on my list because I I've never been as fa- a big a fan of SummerSlam as I have WrestleMania, just because to me aesthetically it's not the same thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, SummerSlam has been here. WrestleMania hasn't, but SummerSlam right. has been here. Right, nineteen ninety five. Nineteen ninety five. Finn right. Balor makes his Legos to it. What's that? Finn Balor. Finn, oh Finn, right, right. Finn yeah. Balor like 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 does his Legoing and yeah. with to the VHS copy of SummerSlam nineteen ninety five. That's right. That's right. So um, you know, but uh, that and um, I mean, I you know, I'll see. I'll watch wrestling anytime, anywhere. I kind of want to go see the Performance Center. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think, uh, I think that would be just a neat thing as a fan yeah, to yeah. go see, just where the sausage is made. And, 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 and as as the and, and, and as where where where, the, where everything develops and how how people learn the craft and also as a performer in, in the business as well as a veteran, uh, just to just to see how that develops and how that happens and, and you know in, in terms of performing you know just ring announcing and, and commentary whatever just get out there and do more and you know push myself beyond my limits what I've done so far. So I do RWA stuff, I do VOW stuff and mm-hmm. I'll do other stuff as it comes along. But and it's it it that's a good compliment to my real life schedule and my schedule as a real person. But I think um uh, you know do, doing more of that going forward just sort of push myself and maybe you know work a new you know find a new fed, work a new state somewhere that I haven't worked before just you know once or twice and I never really pushed myself to do that in the 15 mm-hmm. years just because of my circumstances, what I've done, but you know, maybe mm-hmm. try, it. maybe work in a, a show in Tennessee or something mm-hmm. like that. Just, just something out of the comfort zone, you know. Just because the echoes, I want to get in here. Bobby F. J. Towns on the uh, Facebook chats, and he says he's done mine with Rumble, uh, but he says he's also say uh, PWG at, le- at least once, and also uh, doing the tour of the performance center as we were talking talking about as well. And, and Sorg, mm-hmm. Magnum Pro Wrestling in Omaha, Nebraska. Oh, oh my. Ooh. Where am I going to be? I think I'm going to be in Lincoln. What? So, what promotion of the whole yeah, state? Yeah. <laughs> Magnum Pro Wrestling. Amazing. So if anybody knows any indie wrestling in, around <laughs> Lincoln, Nebraska, Peoria, Peoria, Illinois, Pittsburgh without the H, Kansas. Peoria. I think that's... If, uh, if Magnum's in Omaha, I think Trojan is in Peoria. There you go. There you go. I'll be in <laughs> LA. I'll be around in the greater LA area again. And uh, what's it about? Brooklyn, Michigan. I think oh, Peoria Jesus. is actually the ones I one of the ones I mentioned last week and in, in the around, around the Indies. Indies. Well, there you go. We'll see if they have a show that weekend. See if I can work out. So it might have been the show that uh, D- uh, Dijak might have destroyed. By the way, props the Riz for for making Dijak lol on Twitter. <laughs> They're just he we tagged him because he get to, he, okay. he talked about him and him sure. destroying this promotion on the <laughs> around the Indies on IndieWrestling.us sure. and we get a reply from Dijak, <laughs> I lolled. And now I'm scared to go outside my house. Is it lolled or lolled? That man is a giant man. And yeah, and I don't know. I don't know if everybody out there shovel fists. is aware of Dijak, 
Well, he's the guy that I saw. First time I saw him was the <laughs> NEW show up in Niles, Ohio. I'm filming ringside. He comes out and just utterly destroys this guy, complete healing it up, right? He gets on the rope, and some guy in the front row goes, You're awesome, man. You kick ass. And he just looks down and says, I know. And walks away. <laughs> I'm like, Holy shit. This guy is amazing. He's the guy Dalton Castle called Banana Hands. Banana Hands. Um,. And if Dalton Castle calls you banana hands, you made it. You know exactly where you stand in life. New, new, new uh, bucket list item: high five Dijak and his <laughs> banana hands. <laughs> um, so <laughs> you he heed. <laughs> yeah, I, I lulled, sorry. I lulled. Um, I think that was more of a giggle. Yeah, that was more of a giggle. It popped. Is somebody, is, it popped is somebody tickling you over there? <laughs> I can't see a thing. Everybody's all very well, very well being. No, not you. I'm talking no, about Riz. No. Yeah, is, right, somebody in, him, yeah. is somebody in Riz's house tickling him <laughs> off camera? A bad tickler. Nobody needs to know. So what happens in Riz's house? When, when I first started this, uh, <laughs> you guys mostly took all of mine. Yay, uh, us, us, I wanted us. to do most, like, mostly like a road trip. Because yeah. I wanted to do, do BOLA or, or some PWG show. Uh, some of the indies that I've watched on YouTube look like amazing. Uh, I forget where that one is. You want to go on an indie road trip? Yes. Oh, that I want to go. Amazing. I want to go see Progress. I want to go see. Uh, we gotta get some AAA, sponsors for this. Triple A Mania. Triple uh, mm, right. I want to see. I want to see New Japan. I want to go go down uh, for ICW in England or Scott. I want down that way i want to go see all these places that have amazing talent like where noam dar was mm. and where where dylan dijack once blew up their sound system <laughs> or donovan dijack almost blew up his sound system by the way um sorry i messed up your name sir please don't hurt me um <laughs> and you. go to uh pwg where i've where that was when i first started watching indie promotions was going on uh, a server, a, a server that no longer exists because of uh, the, the man took it down. Uh, but it was you the first time I saw indie professional wrestling <laughs> man, was right. watching PWG stuff on there that somebody downloaded that I don't want to mention. Um, but it was it, it was my first experience into the world of wrestling outside of what we see on television. And I just wanted to see that in person. I wanted to go down, see those guys in person and like, and take it all in. Like I did for Shikara, Shikara, like this past year, like this, this and, and, and of course I want to go down to Florida and watch uh, a full sale. I go down to NXT and watch yep. something at full sale. Uh, see how, how that feels, how that feeling is. Uh, it's probably going to be the same as it's probably going to be annoying hearing the fans not watch the match, but it'll be interesting to see the matches that are taking place. And, and like you guys said, the, the performance center is also a good tour. Probably. I, I'm, I'm also going to add one more final one as a joke, mm -hmm. but kind of serious. I want to go to Cameron, North Carolina <laughs> to find gimmick oh. Lake. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I that, want that I going, want to find gimmick lake sorg. That is going to be our uh fountain of youth. Yes. Literally. We will come back. <laughs> we we will we will all plunge into gimmick lake. We will all emerge exactly how we were on our show on the show on our first appearance. Oh god, so... no. Amen. No. No, Amen will be a fetus. I will be <laughs> from a, Canada. Yes, from Canada, I will be a Canadian woman. Uh, <laughs> I think I was once referred to as a black guy. Yes, um, I'm the worst yes. host ever. <laughs> and, and Sorg, I, why do we Sorg have a community? Will immediately, just what? talk about Lita's boobies. Oh, jeez, I gotta meet her. Sorg I gotta meet her when she's in Sorg. town. We <laughs> Sorg will be D batteries. Sorg. Oh, oh. by the way. I was talking with uh, one of the sexy, talented dudes. 
and it's more or less confirmed there will be a sexy talented dude's return to Indie Mayhem show for this uh, Christmas. <laughs> nice. So yeah, have them on for both shows. Sort. I I, 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 I don't think I don't think we can handle that. <clears throat> I, I know we can. can. Oh I no no no! You're can. not here. So I yeah, know. I, that's why I'm saying Riz, I know. We Riz, can. Riz, hey, I want to know. We cannot because so, I'm probably the most sober guy there. <laughs> Other bucket list item. I'd love to go see Inspire Pro and hang mm. in. Well, just in general, hang in Austin, Texas. Yes. Um, and my yep. short term, man, I hope, I wish I could pull this off. I want to go watch the Royal Rumble in the Alamo Dome with Heyman. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all right. Uh, so, uh, uh, somebody did a lucha thing. I did a good lucha thing. So he did a lucha <laughs> thing, man. Mike with the New York Comic Con and our good friends yes. from Lucha Underground were there. Sorg, uh, I I did a lot of good lucha things. Mm-hmm. Um, Tell me about your lucha things. So, Mike. so lucha underground had a panel. They had a panel at New York Comic Con. Um, now I want to point out this panel was at four o'clock in the afternoon, and uh, for those of you who have never attended a Comic Con, um, panels fill up because they don't empty the rooms. So I got online for Lucha Underground at around 1.45 in the afternoon. Um, I had to sit through a, a Sailor Moon panel. Ooh. Mike, have you ever watched Sailor Moon? <laughs> a sore guy have not. Mike, how much more do you know about Sailor Moon now than you did before this excursion? <laughs> I know way too much about Sailor Moon. Mike, what did you learn this week in Sailor Moon? Um, I learned that Sailor Moon loves two things two things sorg glitter and bad voice acting that's what i've learned in sailor moon okay all right yeah um tell us about lucha so things. so so after sailor moon uh what 90 percent of the panel side note, cleared out side note why why mike are there no pictures of the sailor moon panel <laughs> Sorg, that's because I was on my iPad. I was uh, watching my fantasy football teams. How'd you do? I I did quite well, thank you. Awesome. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Serious now, serious now. Uh, yes. Um, Till I'm not again. So, so the people that are at the panel um, were um, the, the talent. I I'm blanking on. I got them right here. I got Ray Mysterio Jr. I got uh, Taya, Taya? Uh, Eva Lise, Kat- Katrina. And um, our our new friend of the show, co-executive producer Eric Van, Eric Van Wagnon, who I believe is the one that I was introduced to at the uh, at the taping that I can't talk about. I I believe so. Yes. Um. Uh, also, uh, Dorian from AAA was there, and Marty Elias, and um, Skip. I'm blanking on his last name, but he is uh, also a producer Sheffield? of Blue Jr. Underground. What was that? Sheffield. Yeah. No. I was, not about, to, I was about to say that. You beat me to it. God. Damn it, Riz. <laughs> and you say, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah I, no, it. because it, it does sound similar. I forget his last name. Did not get um, a close-up. I want to note, the note, did not get a close-up of him to get his t- title card so I could read it. <laughs> I didn't. I was in the second lots row. Of, I didn't want lots to of pictures of the name. ladies, though. Just saying. Um, I'm, Ty, I want Taya to be my friend. Um, she's great. I, I didn't get a chance. The problem was... I didn't get a chance to talk to any of the wrestlers because as soon as the panel ended, everyone and their mother swarmed mm. all of the wrestlers. I, I guess they probably, probably like Ray Mysterio was like the worst one, right? Like everybody. Probably... Uh, they're all actually pretty heavily swarmed. Wow. Hmm. Hmm. Well, because they're like that. Like I told you that I got online at like around one thirty. It's a damn good thing I did because that panel filled the fuck up. So it was, and, and, and it was like, big lucha underground fans did you feel yes yes absolutely hmm. i mean i'd say maybe 15 percent were there just because it was very mysterio mm-hmm. but wow. the rest it was lucha fans hardcore lucha fans like i saw uh pentagon jr shirts i saw a bunch of different merch and stuff like that hmm. um but uh, several things to note from the panel uh they were talking a lot about um like, you know how the idea came about and all that stuff. And uh, I got to see a little bit of footage. A mm-hmm. little bit of footage. So I'm kind of ahead 
a little bit. They didn't show the full episode, which would have been amazing. But uh, they showed us a clip. Um, I posted a very, 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 very vague picture on Wrestling Mayhem Show on, on, on our uh, Twitter feed with a Lucha Underground spoiler that you will only understand after you see the episode. Don't worry. Trust me, I'm not trying to spoil Lucha, especially this segment, which was amazing. Um, I got to see a little bit of in-ring action. I know what the matches are for this week, and holy shit, they're going to be fun. Um, But also, they announced that uh, they are planning to do a very small tour. Really? Hmm. Yes. Um, They don't know when it's going to start yet. Uh, They don't know how many dates. It's going to be very limited dates. Uh, just because it's not going to be like a huge touring schedule like a TNA or even an NXT, I think. Uh, it's going to be some very limited dates. But um, they were saying maybe late 2016, but most likely early 2017. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Uh, they, they said not only like with scheduling, but they said the logistics of it are a little bit difficult because they want to make sure that the touring, they want to make sure that it has the feel of the temple Mm -hmm. because that's a lot of the atmosphere that has to do with Lucha Underground. So they want to find a way to be able to replicate that for the touring shows. So Dario Cueto's office on wheels. (laughs) I was wondering about like, I I hope it's like a portable office. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Or like, or there's a Dario Vanguard one or something. I'm not sure. Like, <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm not. I'm not sure how they're going to nice. do it, but I, it's something to get excited about because they say it is going to happen. They're just not sure of when yet. It's interesting because right? it, it, it seems to make sense, and then and then you you're entering in this kind of traditional mm-hmm. thing. But it, it would probably be like kind of more of a house show sort of concept right i is that your feeling that's kind of the way they were talking about it yeah Mm -hmm. like more to get the word out than anything else um but they said they are also planning on doing more tapings Mm -hmm. uh they there's nothing been confirmed of a season four yet but they're going to do tapings and they've done from my understand they've done an ultimate lucha three oh yeah well season three is in the camp yeah Season three is completely in the camp. They just say, like, hey, there's, there's probably tapings. post-production work and stuff you're, like that. You're just saying done, they're, but... they're, there's tapings. They just haven't confirmed it as officially being episode four or a series of four. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I, I hope to get out to California. And of course, now, now, now did you press so your new co-executive producer friend um, who, who loves the show, by the way? I'm sure he told um, you that as, as well. As soon as he saw me, he did exactly what Krista Joseph did. He did my bad impression of Vince and screamed the midweek four. <laughs> and I teared up a little bit. I say, like, like, I didn't even have to say hi. He just saw me and screamed midweek. Four. That is, I, that is, that's, that's one of the things that that's really like not unsettling, but like, like kind of, I was taken aback when I went to visit was him and to Joseph, like seeing me and saying, like, like being excited to see me was just like, oh, yeah, hey, what's up? You know, I'm like, excited to see you they, guys, like, too. I've never been the person that someone marks out for. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've never been that guy. Right, that's, right, that's right, not... right, right. It's weird. But it um, was awesome. It, it was really Similar really situation. Good. This is completely unrelated to this. But, uh, you know, we do the awesome cast, right? <clears throat> and Chilla on there, he works for a certain large bank here. Oh, okay. And they have kind of a genius bar, like an Apple genius bar thing for the tech that they, they have there. Sure. And he went down to get like a cord or something. And a guy behind the bar recognized him from the awesome cast. Really? Yeah. Nice. Like, <laughs> like we are like local famous and apparently also in Hollywood. Wow. I, so that's where we're at with the sh- nice. these shows so far. So. Actually, it's fun, kind of funny. One time I was on um, um, one of the previous shows shows here and um a guy who when i worked at radio talk shows back in the day i knew him when he was just a kid and a teenager like recognized me from one of these shows I really think, i think it was the last time here and he calls and he called me out of the blue or through facebook me or something and called me and we reconnected we had a good conversation like 30 minute conversation That's amazing 
never would have happened had it not been for my appearance on the show. It's so weird because like, I talked to him like ten years. It, it, it's so At weird because we only have. I know we're getting so inside baseball on the show, right. but it's a late yeah. show. It doesn't matter. Um, I, you know, it's so weird because like we only get like X amount of people that do respond to us, mm-hmm. and then stuff like that happens. We're like, holy right. crap, who's actually listening to this? Like anytime somebody is like, oh, I heard your show last. Like even like I know Chris Larusso like listens to, like every show. Hi, sure. Chris. Uh, like I know because of the conversations I'd be like, he'll he'll like message me on Facebook and stuff right and and in like every time something like that happens or when i was like oh i heard the show this week or oh yeah i listened to your show i'm just like like i'm always like shocked sure right it's oh, just absolutely. like i've been doing this for 10 years and i'm still surprised when people actually absolutely. listen to the stuff that we put out i mean i i did an interview with a wrestler <laughs> and that wrestler now is friends with me on facebook and you share a birthday and, friends, and- and we and we share uh, Golden Girls uh, pictures, and exactly. yes, I, I did with him today. Because... I named I named his finisher. <laughs> Literally named. What's up, RJ City? Finisher. So hi, RJ City. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's just put the point where I, I just got lulled by Donovan Dijak. <laughs> the internet's amazing, isn't it? All right, that's I mean, enough self-referential. Right. <laughs> Yay us! Yay us! Whoa! Yay us! us. Uh, Mike, anything else? Anything else of note from the uh, Lucha Underground uh, experience that you experienced? Um. Well, <laughs> it's like show. Question, it's like show. Asked. It's like Trump. That They're just words. They're just words. It's just words. The question was asked of Katrina. Um. Because apparently Katrina was the one that came up with the lick of death. Mm -hmm. And it was really funny because she would talk about it. She's like, why did I ever invent this? Because (laughs) if you watch Lucha Underground, like there are times where she's licking sweat, blood, Mm -hmm. tears. Like, yeah, like Like she said, she said there are a number of times. Where she's just like trying to look for the cleanest spot ever. <laughs> yeah. So that but, little, uh, so that little like pause and and pondering and moving her head before she yeah. actually strikes is actually uh, like, that's exactly what's what the it least is. disgusting way to do this? Spot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It looks seductive, but actually, it's tactical. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. And um, someone asked her who the. Uh, who has the tastiest face? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's like the what does Stephanie McMahon smell like? Uh huh. Oh yeah, God. it was an amazing question. Um, and it was it was funny. Like she was thinking about it, and as she was thinking about, Eva Lee was just like gazing over her, like coughing, like. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's right. Kitchen was like, oh yeah, of course, Evie. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it was really interesting. Like, because uh, apparently, like when they cast people, they wrote the stories first, and then they found the wrestlers to fit the characters. Sure, right. So, like, like when they were writing Prince Puma, like they apparently went to a PhD, a guy who has a PhD in Aztec mythology, to learn about the ancient Aztecs to write like the uh to get everything about the prince puma storyline the ancient tribes and all that stuff and i just found that really interesting but uh then you know there are some cases where people become available and they just have to jump on it like sammy callahan Mm -hmm. so yeah because they basically said like oh sammy's available yeah let's just find a spot for him somewhere and we saw him last week on lucha underground being evilise's boyfriend Sure. So yeah, I mean, it was just really, really interesting. Like just getting, like, like we said before, getting to see how they make the sausage a little bit. But um, uh, yeah, uh, trust me, Lucha. There's gonna be a segment this week. I can't wait to talk about it on, <laughs> on Wednesday or Thursday. That's awesome. It's freaking. It's so, awesome. So check out Midweek War, uh, Lucha Underground, because yes. Mike's gonna have some inside knowledge on that. Um, and I, I, we I, will we will eventually have Eric on the show. I'm not sure right. when. I'm going to DM him to see when will be best for him. But mm-hmm. we will definitely have him on because he was he and I talked for like 20 minutes after the panel. Did you guys that. hey Did you guys do a, a, a midweek war for last week? No, we did not. Okay, because um, I was at Comic Con. All right, we're gonna have to touch base on some some stuff. 
Uh, and I'm going to have to do some fancy footwork here as well. Because uh, it turns out the matches that I observed, so I can talk to you guys about them now, <laughs> are now airing, according to Alex Cars. Uh, we are out there in this fuzzy kind of picture uh, in the crowd. If if you see over there, uh, kind of behind, if you're seeing the picture, uh, Occupy Pro Wrestling, power to the Smarks on Twitter. Uh, there's this picture, and we retweeted on our, our account as well, I think on our Facebook group. Uh, if you see the green shirt over on the left there behind uh, um, uh, all those people, uh, PJ Black and all of them over there. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm blanking on names here. Uh, that that green shirt is our good friend Alex Cars out there in California uh, in his uh, Lucha Temple shirt. They let him wear. Got the approval from your new buddy uh, there, there, Mike. And uh, <laughs> I, I'm I'm hanging out right beside him. So uh, so so just look for Melissa Santos green shirt. Me. Yep. Uh, so it'll I, be really hard to take your eyes off Melissa Santos. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Here's that too. Um, or as my wife likes to call her, Melissa Mentos. Um, <laughs> so keep an eye on that. And I guess from the way I understand, it's just sporadically through some episodes will be around, I guess. Uh, so look out for that. Um, I know there's one specific uh, kind of all over the arena match that got very close in front of us as well. So I made sure to really get into it. <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, no, yeah. Keep, so play Spot the Mayhemmer. Currently <laughs> on Lucha Underground season three. I want to watch this episode, Mike. I mean, I've and, spotted and Sorg you. so many places already from Chikara. Oh, that's right, Chikara. Well, yeah, which is like my head looking over the guy in front of me in the back row <laughs> by the yeah. entrance. Um, I love that you pointed out the one where um, the former Mister Touchdown called me a nerd. Yeah. Uh, which did not make the video, by the way. It did not make the video. I was <laughs> but sad. I had a flashback because I I forgot about that moment until you brought it up, Riz. Thanks a lot. You, you're gonna have those nightmares again because he's going back. He's Sorry. scraping back, like to back to the entrance. Sure. sure. And he goes, and he just gets because I'm on the end of the row in the back row because I'm like it was right by the entrance. This is great. Everybody comes out. You know, cool. I'm gonna be real close to Mickey James. Not creepy. Um, Not at all. No, that was creepy, sort. Okay, uh, but but and uh, he just like he's going and he's like mean mugging everybody because he's like the evil version character or whatever. And he just gets right into my face. He goes nerd. <laughs> <Just like. laughs> so he was ogre oh, from me? Revenge of the Nerds. One. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Yeah. Wow. Well. It, it, his, I don't want to get in all like a Chikara talk, but his original character was a football player, right? Okay. And, and, Hads and everything, right? And he got evilized then, by the by the bad guys, evil. and, nice. and he reason. just comes out under he comes out to his like his real name, and he looks like 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 he looks like somebody dumped baby oil on him. He, he <laughs> looks like, like he jar. looks like the bad guy from some like seventies like show, sure. because he's like super blonde fit and oiled and wearing like not enough in the tights area. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, but looks like, like, like a bad guy from a star Trek, you know, episode, you know, from a star war, from a, not, not, not a star war. No, like flash Gordon or something, you know? So, so I remember when I, when I rang announced for Chikara, on their like eighth show ever from Wall PA. Wow. And Bryce Remsburg hooked me up with he was like my eyes and ears because he was he was the ref. And I, having done normal shows for CWF and, and FNW, I didn't know anything from Shikara. I just got a call from a guy who said, Hey, this group's coming in town, you know quack a little bit. Can you ring announce the show? And I ring announced and I said, Sure, no problem. You know, here I am able to do anything. And I do the usual ring announcing bit after the show, and this is at Wall PA, and I think the VFW in Wall, over by uh, out east by Monroeville and, and Forest Hills. Okay. And uh, Wilmerding. And um, so, you know, I, I do the usual thing. I introduce myself to everybody, shake and all that. And, uh, and you're looking to get weights in hometowns like I usually do when I'm ring announcing. And Bryce gets me, pulls me aside, gets my ear, and says, okay, that's great, but you also have to introduce this. And so they have to have me introduce each wrestler's backstory, just like you said with the football player. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like each of them, like like probably 20 of them, <laughs> not just weights in hometowns, but 
I have to give it, yeah. and it's it for the presentation. It helps, of course, absolutely, yeah. especially for a relatively burgeoning new promotion because mm-hmm. it was only like their eighth or ninth show. And and, and you also have to make a, a an awesome uh, main event speech. Oh yeah, that's right. new. That's yeah. new. I don't think they that's did right. that. No, not when, back. Not, when, for uh, me. not for me. Well, they didn't do that when I was there last, and loud and obnoxious was the uh, announcer. Okay. Um, but no, they do. If you get a chance, because I think has one of them the, the speech from one of the nights was posted on night Facebook one, or night, from night, night one because two, two. it's this guy. Uh, what was uh, he was the party czar because he knows where the parties Vlad where the Romanov. parties are. Oh, Vlad God. Romanov. He's doing yeah. a Russian thing, <laughs> and it's tremendous. And he gets it. Remember how RWA everybody comes up and does the ring? Oh, sure. Used to sure. do the ring the yeah. ring thing. Um, so he'll invite everybody to come up to the ring and start you know, uh, mm-hmm. pounding on the ring to, to rumble. And he just gives a speech about how important pro wrestling is and why everybody's here. And What's it just like hypes the shit out of you. That's awesome. And he did it three nights and gave awesome. me the wrestling shows. I give him right now. It gives me the wrestling shows mm-hmm. all three nights at this. So I'm like, Oh, he's doing it again. Oh, we're doing yeah. this again. I like, like, I was like, can he, I love the wrestling. Can chills. he really top the night before yeah. and it was just like it's just like by the time it gets the end of like that's right that's why we're fucking here yeah. that's I mean, why and, there's and about I get, I get those chills every time the rwa show when, I, when they play uh, we will rock it behind when i'm behind the curtain mm-hmm. and i do that i get the chills every time mm-hmm. i know what to expect it's something i've done dozens of times before but you f- you actually do feel it it seems so cliche and 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 trite to say it but until you actually do that Mm-hmm. And, or, or, and have the hundreds of fans on the other side of this physical curtain so hyped, so ready for anything, so ready for wrestling, especially in RWA's case where we're 15, 30 minutes late as it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they're, they're over, it's overdue. And then you got to go through the rules and everybody boos you. And I love and, that because and, that's, and, that's my gauge because that's, that's my thing. And you know, yeah. it, they're just so ready for something that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> You're the last thing I'm they the want to see. They want to see. So is you coming out? I there. have to heal it up with the rules. Yeah, but um, no, but but I mean that adrenaline, the wrestling chills. I get right. those too right. doing that, and, and it's very, it's a very real thing. I, I I love, and I've done that. You know, watching it, uh, even edit post, even post editing a show. Sure. When I I, uh, I got it a couple times with RWA, I've, I definitely got it with Super Indie and, and some Cage Fury stuff. And like where I witnessed the thing and I can't, went back to edit it and still got the chills again. Right. You know, like every time I come back back to that. And that's like that's like that buzz that I think mm-hmm. that's that drug. I think a lot of us as wrestle fan res, wrestle fans oh, right. as wrestling yeah, fans hey, chase and maybe more of us you know, that are involved with wrestling. Absolutely. Even more so being part of it and, and be on the other receiving end of something like that. So. Guys, now that we've deep. had a moment, that was deep. Now that we've got, got a moment, deep. I'm, gonna, deep. I'm gonna breathe here. Just drink it <sighs> in, man. Drink it in, man. Drink in the mayhem, man. Let me know what you guys learned from wrestling this week. Oh, Sork, I watched so much wrestling this week. <laughs> <laughs> no, because uh, I had to catch up from Comic Con. Mm-hmm. So the Lucha panel was Sunday. I went home. I watched No Mercy. I watched Lucha. I watched NXT. The next night I watched Raw. And I watched Impact. And Total Bellas. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. The last two you could have done. done He's without. doing the job. No, He's making sure true. it gets done. Right. Somebody Total has to Bellas do it. Total Bellas is amazing. Well, Total then. Bellas. Wait, wait, is John Laurinaitis all I can... All, all I can handle on this show, yes. Okay. And I'm so what and what I'm going to say that I learned is about John Laurinaitis. Yes. <laughs> wow. Now, I, I want. Uh, it's a warning. <laughs> this is a warning. Once you hear this, you will never, ever be able to unhear it would you still like me to say what i've learned hold on yes let, hold on let me mute your mic yeah no <laughs> you sound like this. um i learned that it definitely does not take an hour 
for John Laurinaitis to finish. Oh, wow. Oh, oh my God. Okay. Oh. Oh. Johnny Ace so, doesn't do a Broadway, folks. So, oh. No right. Broadways oh. for Johnny Ace. Oh. Oh, We're the opposite wrestling chills because I have those right now. <laughs> <laughs> wrestling hey, dry I, heaves. I gave <laughs> the re- wrestling you all heaves. a chance. <laughs> I gave you all a chance. Oh, right, right. You warned us. I don't you, feel good. You forewarned no, us. No, I don't feel good right I, now. This is this is on you. I would have come <laughs> up with something else. <laughs> like, 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 have you ever done like a hot chili, like a hot, either hot chili, hot chicken wings, like yeah. a challenge like that? Mm-hmm. And, and how pumped you are. And then all of a sudden you take one bite and then you regret everything that ever happened to you. <laughs> I warned you. You ever you ever like clean up like 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 dog poop or the cat box and it was like really like juicy and then you like have a chili dog too close to that experience and it reminds you of the poop for some reason and you get that feeling <laughs> like like, oh am I eating the poop because wow. it's chili and it's really kind of the same consistency? That's the feeling I have right now. Oh. I've never got a chili dog I, again. <laughs> I want to reiterate. Uh, this is all your faults. <laughs> yeah, I know. I would have come up with something else. No, it's no, that was fine. That's fine. Okay, okay. Ugh. I think we've learned our lesson. You I think I think this. we know what we yeah. learned this week. Yeah. Right. Um, I need a puke you, bucket you should down watch, here. No chili Despite dogs. My, what I learned, you should watch Total Bells. <laughs> Just skip that I part. actually will. I'm gonna go, it I'm is not, amazing. I've never seen a second of Total Divas, but I will watch the Total Bells. Oh, you don't have to. That's the beauty of it. We oh, just good. said I had to. Oh, good. It's a good. Ju- it's a good issue number one. You could say. <laughs> it's all. It's 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 post crisis John Cena. <laughs> like, like what? Oh, I didn't goodness. know there was John one. John Cena broken. John Cena. <laughs> what was John Cena's infinite crisis? <laughs> yeah, right. John Cena's infinite crisis was making Nikki Bella sign a contract to live in his house. Oh yeah, that was <laughs> no, no, like seriously, I forgot about that. That was an episode yeah, yeah. Of Total Divas a couple of years ago. Yeah, that was like early Divas. Um, because you, you get the cold open of John Cena reading the rules for his house, <laughs> and I'm not. Nice. I'm not. No, 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 no. Shel- this is beyond it. Sheldon Cooper. Oh my! No, I, I'm being. I'm being really real about this. <laughs> like if you have dinner at John Cena's house, you are not allowed to not go to the cigar room afterwards. Wow, hey, that's a double name. Oh, the my men retire to the cigar room. Oh, the ladies retire to a wine room. Huh. Who would have thought what? he was such a traditionalist? Right. Um, it, it goes beyond, and wow. and you have to dress up. Yeah, you have, you have to dress up. For I dinner. actually heard about this. I heard about that too. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Very traditional. Uh, and, and also, um, okay. So, do, do you guys? Yeah, Sorg. I know. I know you've had dogs. Riz, uh, have you? Have you? Have yes, you guys we just had talked dogs? about that. Yeah. Yes. Chili dogs. Yes. Yes. Okay. Mm, now you know dogs. how dogs can occasionally get a little excitable. Yes. And give you a little nip. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. John's uh, Josie. Uh, Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella's dog, oh. adorable little dog, gets apparently um, anxious and gives John Cena a little bite <clears throat> on the back of his leg. Oh. Not even bleeding, just a little nip because he was excitable because there was a lot moving around. And John Cena's immediate response is, we need to call the Animal Control Center. Oh. Immediate response. Huh. Um, John Cena is fucking weird, y'all. <laughs> okay, that's what I learned. John Cena is fucking weird. And <laughs> we, we, Nikki we told, Bella, we just went Nikki on a journey Bella, with Mad Mike. We really did. Nikki yeah, Bella I learned things. Like, Nikki Bella is a saint. A wow, well paid I'll have to watch this. saint. Well wow. a saint. A saint <clears throat> with a Range Rover. What a <laughs> and, saint. Where's Bobby? And at? No wedding ring or child yeah, i understand right. why <laughs> i understand <laughs> everything and, about john cena in this one episode of Total and Beast. daniel bryan is about to have both yep. all right i want one other thing i learned that two shows simultaneously defined superman for me total bellas did it in 22 minutes and supergirl <laughs> did it in 30 minutes and they are two completely different superman what? 
John Cena Superman. Yeah. Come on, oh, we all know true. this. Yeah, right. we all know this. Yeah. Okay. I, okay, I'm done how learning. Do any of I'm us follow again. that up? No, I all can't. Right. All right. I'm sorry. That was I'm a sorry. lot of information. Yeah. I wa- like I said, I've watched way too. Much this is a heavy myself. last half of the show. It really it's is a very heavy yeah. and and well. I don't. Think, I, um, I don't know what we can do to top this. Also, Here. Daniel Bryan doesn't know what a quickie is. Oh. Mm-hmm. Riz. That brings it back. So, Riz. Uh, I learned that TJ Park T J Perkins knows nothing about video games. Why? Press pause on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. First of all, you don't break an N64 by accident. <laughs> no. <laughs> you do not break. Oh, yeah, no, you right. have to do that shit on purpose. Yeah, yeah. So I, TJ I, Perkins, I thought I you... broke the N64 last week, actually. No, 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 no. no. Turns so, out I needed no. to blow on the cartridge before any of them worked. Exactly. <laughs> so so right. TJ Perkins forcefully <laughs> broke that N64 when he was a kid and made Brian Kendrick pay for that. That's what happened. You know how you how break an N64 when you hit somebody with it? Oh, right. When you throw it against the wall. No, it, yeah. And even then, it won't. It will just have like a little nick in there and it, it's, it still works. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, a plastic tank. That's, like why, it, that's why we're still playing N64. Uh, no mercy. Sork, Sork. You were at the Nintendo store with me. You've seen the old school Game Boy that has survived the Gulf War. Yeah, yeah. I want to and know. it still works. Yeah, I think I, that, that I was the one that was. How, I want more background on this. How did they break that? Maybe, M64? maybe when they do did that, they it, rip it, it apart and then try to put it back together, <laughs> Listen, or did they just blow it up? Uh, Riz, or put it in a microwave or something. Riz, <clears throat> use the Mayhem account. But please mm-hmm. ask TJ Perkins this question. Mm-hmm. You're like, listen, <laughs> I have a problem. Asking for a friend. Asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> which is me on my other account. You, Riz, <laughs> on your other account. Uh, I Please do this and follow up with us. Bert Legrand, <laughs> what is your thing you learned this week in wrestling? I think for the, you know, in, in the age of the quote unquote new era, I really think that uh, everything old is new again. I never in my wildest I feel dreams... like you said the same thing last time you were on well, the show. No, well, that, <laughs> I don't know why I'm getting some kind of deja vu. Well, Sorg, new things are old now. Right, see? It's, it's deja vu. <laughs> yes. it's the, well, it's not, this isn't about not getting Nakamura, which I still don't. But Oh, I, I forgot about that. The... Uh, the, did, those, did, didn't I make an image that says this, yes, you did. Yeah, this man you doesn't did. like Nakamura? I love that. Why. <laughs> right. Good tease, by the way. Good tease. You're a, you're a master showman. Um, oh, I, wish but, I, had, uh, I wish I had time to do more of those. But uh, <laughs> in the age of the new era, the oldest regular performer on the show is still the most entertaining. By doing things he did 18 years ago. Jericho? Yes. Okay. You take two of the greatest characters of all time, the conspiracy victim Jericho and best in the world at what I do, Jericho. Make him the same person. And he's become the most compelling guy to watch in a long time. Yeah. And, and Plus the scarf. Plus the scarf. I mean, plus the scarf. Yeah. he literally brings two or three new things to his game every week. Between. I want to invite you and the listeners to listen to my theory yes. about the Jericho list. Okay. And how it relates to the Lucha Underground medallions, gold okay. medallions. Okay. That's on uh, that's on the raw wrap up this week. I will do that. Uh, which is uh, entitled, uh, it's entitled, um, <clears throat> um, uh, podcast in a cell. Okay. Uh, so okay. go listen to that. I'll do that. And and, and let me know what you think about. Absolutely, hundred percent. So, so. All right. I uh, for also from the Facebook uh, wheels learned that even James Welters, well Ellsworth can win the big one. <laughs> Although, he hasn't uh, yet. That's yeah. next, next, next well, week. He won one. Not, maybe not the big one, but he won one. And um, yeah, I wait, learned... wait. If James Ellsworth win next week, mm-hmm. it, and AJ Styles right now is the face that runs the place, what would James Ellsworth be? Like, would it the be? Runs the place. Would it be the win without a chin? Right. Like, is is that what is that, that what we're looking be, for yeah. next week? The win without a chin. The win without a chin. 
I mean, look at him. He doesn't really have a chin. The face that's out of place. Ah, <laughs> yes, ah. that's it. That's it. The face that's out of place. <laughs> wow. Um, Sorg, what did you learn from wrestling this week? I learned that my waitress at Olive Garden always wanted to be a. a, a, a well, it was weird because she said she said I always wanted to be like Miss Elizabeth and come out with a purse and then hit the person with it. <laughs> I almost wanted to correct her, like, so you want to be well, sensational, Sherry? But I was gonna uh, say, that's an oddly specific era of Miss Elizabeth that she wanted to be like. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, she I would... know, Sorg, she might have watched during the NWO. I was that's gonna true. say, yeah, that's true. That's I want to be the first Miss Elizabeth I saw in Nitro that one week. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the version of Miss Elizabeth where she just looks like she's being held against her will. Right. Like, yeah. like, like you're looking. For her and the camera to like blink twice if you're <laughs> yeah, in danger. Like, she's okay. <laughs> oh, uh, like the aggressive blinking. I'm sorry, but yeah, thank you, Bobby. I did almost miss this because I was looking at the wrong window. Uh, but but uh, Bobby FJ Town says he learned that he 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 would like to imagine talking smack as a morning chat show. Also, <laughs> also I'm okay with this premise. Right. I just watch it. Just watch it Wednesday morning. Yeah, right. and it's you're on good. the network. You're good. You're it's good, on the right. networks anytime. I watch it. I watch it when I'm editing this show. Typically, right? Um, I, I think I think Bobby wants it with like the big window in the back where you have everyone that's like <laughs> going to their morning commute. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. I love Renee. Like they have the big. It's all the people the driving by in Stanford, Connecticut, right? Yeah. Um, um you so can't boring. see anything from their building. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's the joke. That's. The I joke. know. I'm sorry. That's Security. The joke. Gave um, <laughs> it's not even that doesn't even. You work can there. see I ninety five. Also, if I ever wanted to see John Cena as a heel, Total Bellas is for you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, mm-hmm. make, I mixed up. This is entirely true. Here, but um, in case you didn't see it in the chat, yeah, he thank, hates thank Josie. How much more of a heel can you be? Mm. Mm. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Guys, this is one of the more fun wrestling mayhem shows I think we've done in a long time. We learned a whole bunch about ourselves, each other, and maybe about you guys out there. Thank you so much, everybody. WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe, comment, however you want to do it. Uh, and just in general, apologies to the 405 Media Network. Um, Mad Mike <laughs> at 4883 <laughs> on the Twitters, of course. Yes, uh, I will be live. Tw- I will be back on the live tweet uh, forums for at least Lucha Underground, maybe Impact, depending on when we do things. Uh, but yo, I have so many things to say about Impact. I didn't like him to him here. But, oh, <laughs> we'll so do this someplace things. else. Um, on the midweek war. I am curious about this interesting trios concept. Oh, it's one of those things. I know it's one of those things that on paper I'm like, that's actually interesting. I'm a, sword. They didn't even say what it was. Oh, I'm interested no. by the entire TNA episode from the oh, Hardy God. Compound. Like, <laughs> I can't wait for that. Wait, is that happening? They, Matt says they, Matt says it's going to happen in December. They're, they're, oh they're, no! They're filming an entire episode in, for the Compound. Is it? This came out today. It's the Hardy Christmas special. The Hardy I can't Christmas wait. From the <gasps> oh my God! If it's the Hardy Christmas special, <laughs> Matt, sign me feature, the fuck featuring, up. Featuring, according to Matt, Maxell's debut. Oh, <laughs> his first match. Oh so, man! Can we? Oh, so sword, maybe maybe next that, week. Our, this is a this is a preview. Next week, our big question will be: How would you book King Maxwell? Yes. Everyone has a week to think about this. I think somebody no, already no. has. Sorg, <laughs> we have a week to. Think and about his this. name is James Ellsworth. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and his name is James Ellsworth. Well, That's I mean, you, the picture I used for for what did you learn this week is him like trying to club at Braun Strowman, and uh, <laughs> like that's like well yeah. that, that seems accurate, right? I mean, right. so uh, the Riz, yes, he is. Uh, as soon as it downloads, which he paused it so he could do this podcast and actually talk well, to us. I did us. not pause it. I actually just uh, made it t- turn it on like rest mode. Which will make it still download. So. We don't need details. Riz is going to be Tomorrow. live streaming at some point. WWE Tomorrow. 2K17. Yes, and uh, I want your guys' opinion on this. Mm. Do I start with the story mode? Do I start with a the, the Royal Rumble challenge I always do? Or do I 
download the great collie <laughs> and and make the great collie part of the bullet club oh. <laughs> wow. no, I, I think you give great collie stone cold steve austin's atv entrance i don't think wow. i don't think Ooh. you the bollywood i don't club. think riz does anything until he's downloaded great collie like just on principle <gasps> riz riz no riz here's what you do you download great collie you download the Bollywood boys and you give them the NWO entrance. Oh, I like that. Ooh. I like that idea. Can you book like Great Kali versus Nakamura for the NXT Championship at, <laughs> no, at I will. TakeOver? <laughs> and and Riz, you should do the Royal Rumble thing first, though. Can yeah, you? And, and you have to be Mojo Rawley. Can you give Great Ka- <laughs> Okay. Can you give. <laughs> <laughs> it's on, Riz, it's on the podcast now. You got to do it. Can't. You gotta do it, Riz. It's where'd he go? Wait, where'd he go? Contract. Where'd he go? He disappeared. This is a verbal contract. You don't get hype. You stay hype, Riz. I hate. I hate all of you now. When you stream <laughs> that, when, when you stream that, wait, wait. I'm yeah. going to stream that. When you stream that, you need to wear your five X hype bros shirt that I gave you. Five X shirt. Yeah, as, as the booby prize. Shirt, Riz. Merry Christmas. <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, uh, um, I I was gonna. That's way better than what I was gonna say because I was gonna say you give Great Kali like Sasha Banks entrance. Yeah, I can do that too. <laughs> I mean that that's almost too good for Kali. I mean right. the boss. <gasps> no, Great give Great Kali Mojo Raleigh's entrance. <laughs> <laughs> Sorg, where can they find you? I am at Sorgatron, but that's not important because you can check out Bert LeGrant at RWA, yep. including Bloody Harvest here this Saturday, this October twenty second. No, live. no, no, wrong. No. So October 15th in yes. West Newton, PA. I'll be live. It'll be a lot of fun. Live. I can't wait. I love, I love doing those shows. The highlight of my week, um, the highlight of my month of doing those shows. And uh, I love the crowd out there. And whoever is watching, listening to this right now, come out and see us. There you go. Go check it out. Indeed. First time, long times, whoever it I, needs to be. And I've stopped plugging the Twitter because I've stopped using the Twitter. On the t- oh, okay. <laughs> I, so can, I cannot contain my thoughts on 140 your thing. characters. At real OSBL. I don't remember what it is, is anymore. Is vacant. I, I, I have I to use, look it up every time. I use my live Facebook more often now under my, under my real name. I've been posting a lot on Facebook because so, it's longer. <laughs> I can't keep it, I can't keep it under 40, 140 characters. <laughs> I say hello in 140 characters. I, don't, I can't. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, if you've heard his introductions. Yeah, I... <laughs> it's the rules, man. And at Sorgatron on the Twitter if you want to get at <clears throat> me. And uh, SorgatronMedia.com for all the great podcasts, wrestling and otherwise, that we do around here. WrestlingManager.com. I did that like 10 minutes ago. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. It's been a blast this week. We'll see you guys next time. Actually, photographer Dan Hooven, we're going to check on uh, what uh, he thinks of Ryback in the Indies, <laughs> because that's what we talk about when he comes on <laughs> next week. Oh, Wrestling God. Mayhem Show. Uh, check out Indie Mayhem Show. We are scheduled to have Kevin Thorne, who's going to be part of House of Hardcore here in Pittsburgh this weekend as well. Uh, that's right. I have my interview with a vampire. We'll see you guys next time. Mayhem Show out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. You guys are cool.